Hello and welcome to the video. This is all about mission planning, how you can make your model fly autonomously and this works on anything that iNav supports. So whether it's something like a quadcopter, maybe it's something like a wing or a fixed wing vehicle, but also now rovers and boats. Now I need to say a massive thank you to a gentleman called Pavel. Pavel Spakowski is one of the lead developers of iNav and one of my friends and has been amazing at making sure that everything I'm about to talk about in the video is accurate because as I'm recording this at the beginning of September we are in INAV 2.51 2.52 territory in INAV 2.6 there's going to be quite a few changes so everything I'm going to talk about in this video is accurate and will continue to be accurate but in INAV 2.6 there will be additional things added additional waypoint types but don't worry I'll get into more of that later on now if you are new to INAV and you want to kind of figure more of this out there is the INAV 2020 series for beginners. Put a link down below, go and check that out. Don't start in this video if you've never seen any iNav stuff before. Um, the other thing I'll talk about is the fact to get a lot of questions about if you're going to do mission planning, are you going to go with Ardu Copter or Ardu Plane, the Ardu Pilot family technologies, or iNav? For simple mission planning, iNav is absolutely fine. And as I said, it's very aggressively being developed at the moment with lots of changes coming not only in the code but also in the iNav configurator too. If I am going to do it seriously, I mean mapping, surveying, a lot more of those kind of things, then at the moment it's still definitely going always to be RD Pilot. But let me show you what the Arch of the Possible looks like and the process to go through to get the missions all working. Time codes as usual down below, so you could have skipped this whole intro bit if you really wanted to. And I'll kind of go through each of the pieces. A couple of things before we get into the weeds. Let's uh, go through a couple of basics. So as I've already said, mission planning is the ability to load a mission onto the flight controller and flick it into a mode where the flight controller will then execute that mission autonomously. Mission is a set of waypoints and in the basic version that we're going to go through now, waypoints are just a point in the air with a particular height and also with a particular speed associated with it uh, and also there's a radius around it and that radius is there so that the model doesn't have to get exactly in that point if it gets within that radius of the point it'll consider that point visited and it'll visit each of the waypoints in turn and you can set it up so it will return to home at the end now you can only have one mission on the flight controller at once that's not strictly true, but what the way it works is that you save it into the EEPROM memory of the flight controller. The EEPROM memory is the one that survives you unplugging and replugging the battery in, and then you load it into memory. So you can actually, if you really wanted to, you could have one mission in EEPROM and one in memory, but in reality, the way it works is you create your mission, you save it onto the flight controller, then you save it into EEPROM. When you get to the field, you load the mission from EEPROM into the flight controller and that's done via a stick command and then you go and fly hit it into nav uh, waypoints and then it will fly autonomously don't worry if that sounded really horrendous i'll put a link below as well to uh, the link in the wiki that explains this uh, but it's i'll go through each of the steps in a minute just think of it for now only one mission at once on the eprom memory and you're going to load that there are lots of apps out there that you can be used to create the mission to put on it. At the moment, I would probably just use good old iNav Configurator. Uh, iNav Configurator 2.5, whatever, at the moment is only capable of supporting the, the basic waypoint type, but allow you to do everything and have a go if you have a waypoint model that you want to try missions on. Do be careful. The waypoint missions rely on all the GPS stuff on something like this or a flying wing to work perfectly. If you can't do uh, a loiter, if you can't do GPS uh, return to home reliably, there is no point looking at missions. Make sure all that GPS stuff is working beautifully because if it isn't, there's not a hope that the waypoint mission is going to run fine as well. With that all said, let me go through the gotchas. We'll create a mission, put it on here, and then I'll show you what it looks like to go out and fly and the process you go through at the field. 
So to get your INF mod ready for mission planning, there's only a handful of steps and they're all in the configurator. First of all is to make sure that nav WP is available to select as a mode on a switch. That's the one that you're going to have to be in to tell INAV that you want to fly autonomously. Then there are a number of settings in the CLI. There's one called nav WP safe distance. That's quite a handy thing to have because what that does is that if, for example, you thought you'd save the waypoint mission and you were in another part of the country and you loaded the waypoint mission and then went to fly, if that first waypoint is too far away, then it won't do the autonomous mission. Otherwise, if that's set to zero, which you can for disable, then what it would have done is say, you know, I'm on the, uh, I'm in Cheshire, which is in the northwest of England, and I went all the way over to Yorkshire to fly, and I forgot to save the new mission that was interested to eat prom. If I loaded the mission that was for over this side of the country and I hit nav WP and the safe distance is set to zero, then as far as the quadcopter is concerned, that's where you want me to go. So it's going to fly over there. So if you do set it to zero uh, to disable it, use with extreme caution. But be aware that number is th the first waypoint has to be within that number. Uh, I would probably set it for one kilometer for safety. And then in theory, you're never going to be in a situation where your first point is more than a kilometer away from you hopefully. The other one is nav waypoint radius. Uh, I would set that at 10,000 for a fixed wing. Less is fine for a multi-rotor. Again, that's the radius around the point that when the model is within, it's going to consider that waypoint reached. Uh, in high windy conditions, you might have to make that even more, but 10 meters is probably where I'd go for something like a flying wing. I'd probably go maybe for five meters uh, for something like a multi-rotor that has more fine control and can kind of just uh, hover in and seek the center of the waypoint. Don't forget that all the return to home settings are all set as well. You're going to initiate a return to home at the end of the mission to bring it back to you. And also if something weird happens, uh, then you're going to want to hit the return to home um, button anyway. The on-screen display waypoints are available in the on-screen display. Uh, you can't turn them on within the OSD stuff in Configurator at the moment. You have to go in through the menu in your goggles. And be aware that this will not work, as I've said before, if you have a poor GPS fix, if you're in a situation where you've got a bad H-stop, uh, those kind of situations you probably wouldn't fly anyway, but definitely won't work with Mission Planner. Uh, if the mission isn't loaded into memory, so if you remember the mission is stored on the EEPROM, you load it into the memory of the flight controller and then you go and fly. When you unplug the battery, the mission in EEPROM stays there, but the one that's in the memory just disappears. That's why you have to reload it every time. Or if you go to fly and uh, the first waypoint mission is too far away. So we talked about that earlier on. Again, if you set it for a kilometer, that's probably going to be fine. And I would also add the INAV Lua scripts onto your radio just so that you can monitor the flight as it's flying around autonomously. So let's go onto the computer. Let's create a mission and load it onto my flying wing. And then we'll go to the field and uh, give it a fly. So here we are in Configurator. I'm just going to connect to the model and jump into the Mission Control tab. And by default, if you've never done anything on it before, it'll look like this. And if you zoom out, you realize that's because you're looking at the 00, zero coordinates on the planet. And that is in the middle of the sea. So you can drag it around and actually then start zooming in in the place you want to create your mission. Once you've zoomed into the place that you're interested in creating the mission for, then you can start to add waypoints. However, the first thing I do is to click on the little cog in the top left hand corner of the map and set your default height in centimeters. And that will be the default height for all the waypoints you create after that point. And you can also select the default speed. However, that, that speed control doesn't work for fixed wing, just uses the nav throttle and multi-rotors will actually use the nav speed set in the advanced tuning tab. So I usually just leave that at zero. So then we can start to just click on the map and create our waypoints. And each of these will be, at the moment, just stored on the computer. And as I start doing these, you'll see in the top left-hand corner in total information, the distance, total distance traveled will be shown. Now, this black box in the top right-hand corner is just giving me the details of the current GPS lock that I have. And we can see here that that is a whacking 58 
kilometers <laughs> we'll make sure we do return to home at the end of the mission if you don't do that it'll just loiter around the last waypoint and then if you wanted to if it was a multi-rotor i'd click the landing button and have it land as well now each of these waypoints is also editable if you click on them then the points come up in the left hand type then you can see the latitude, the longitude, the default altitude, you can change that and then you can save it back. So you can decide how all this does and how it's all going to work. You can also click and drag a waypoint once it's been created or you can delete it as well. Now once you're happy with the mission, you can save the file to the computer. If you click save file, you can save it for future reference. You can then save the mission to the flight controller. That will save it into the memory first and the mission valid will go green at the top and then at the bottom you can click save EPROM mission. So we're going to click save mission to flight controller. We get the mission valid is a little tick. We can see that the available points are 8 of 60 which means we're in good shape. And then I'll click on save EPROM mission and that will save it on to the flight controller. Now the EPRON is where we're going to load it from when we get to the field. So to make sure that everything has worked, what I will do is remove all the points, then load the EPRON mission, then load the mission from the flight controller and confirm that what you can see is what you have just saved and it has actually saved it. A couple of things to be aware of. The number of waypoints supported does vary. It depends on the amount of space in the flight controller. 60 is quite typical for modern flight controllers now. Uh, make sure that you can fly the total distance of the flight. Again, it's in the top left-hand corner. It's not going to check that for you. And be aware that there's no kind of return to home if your battery gets too low as well. So at the moment, it is all reliant on you doing your homework and making sure that you're not doing anything dumb. Be careful with the altitude as well. There's no terrain following. The altitude that you're setting in here is referenced from the point that you take off from. So be aware of that. If you're going to be flying somewhere near hills or large trees or anything like that, you need to be aware of that and setting the height appropriately for those individual waypoints. And if you have an issue when you engage return to home and then re-engage the mission, unfortunately it doesn't pick up where it left off. Uh, it, the mission will restart and hopefully again that will improve in future versions of iNav but that's the way it works right now. So with that all done let me go to the field and show you how to actually load the mission and get this thing to fly autonomously. So here's the on-screen display recording from my Brain Dart, and this is the Brain FPV vector-based on-screen display for iNav, and I'm using this because it just looks so pretty. Uh, the different versions will display slightly differently. Now the first thing we need to do, of course, is wait for the model to get a GPS lock, and then we need to load the model into memory. And to do that, on a Mode 2 radio, you hold the stick to the top right hand corner of the right hand control and that will then load it into memory now if it's worked then it will just not say anything if the first waypoint is too far away and what you've done is you've placed your waypoint farther away than the nav wp underscore safe underscore distance amount that you've set then you'll see this error if you do then you're gonna have to move closer to your waypoint or change that value in the cli now, if it's all worked, then in this on-screen display, you can see all the waypoints appear. Now, this is a slightly different mission. Uh, waypoints 1 to 6 are normal waypoints. Uh, waypoint 7 isn't a real waypoint. It's kind of a phantom waypoint, and it's going to return to home at the end of that. So, standard stuff. Enable auto-launch, throw it into the air, and then once it's flying, flip the switch to enable nav WP mode and then we're flying autonomously. So I've got my hands off the sticks and the plane will rise to the altitude that we've set and nav altitude hold will also be enabled in the background and it will start to fly the pattern. Now again, it's important that the radius, the nav waypoint radius is big enough, particularly for a fixed wing model to easily hit the waypoints in windier conditions. Now this is quite a calm day, so it's just gonna go and cycle through each of these in turn, no real drama. Now, as it comes back, as it's finishing the mission, you can see that we're about to pass waypoint six, and it looks like there's a seventh one, but that seventh one is actually a bit of a phantom one. That's the GPS return to home that's still kind of counted as a waypoint. 
So as we pass six, then it will initiate return to home. It still says that it's going to a waypoint. It doesn't change it, unfortunately, but the model will now climb steeply to the return to home altitude and then come back home. So once that's done, just a case of taking it out of nav WP into whatever mode that you fly and bringing it into land safely. So there we are. That's how the mission planning stuff works. Again, at the moment, it's the very basic waypoint type. There's loads of stuff coming in iNav around missions, but hopefully you know enough how to do it. Pretty straightforward. Go into configurator, create the mission for the place that you want to fly, set your default altitudes, um, and then once you've got that done, save it into the memory of the flight controller, then save it into the EEPROM, disconnect everything, go to the field, load the mission into the memory using the stick command, and then go and fly, and when you're ready, hit the nav waypoint, and away it'll go. Just be aware of all the little caveats and gotchas in this video. If you uh, watch out for all of those, you should have a fantastic time with it. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.